Hey guys, recently I had a person ask me the question, um, how can you make it easier to stick to a keto and intermittent fasting program? Are there any tips? Okay. And so I asked, I asked them back, um, what are you running into? What throws you off? Okay. And so I'm going to go through all the objections one by one. But really the question is for you, if you're having a hard time sticking to this, what throws you off? Isolate the barrier because there are solutions to every single barrier. I'm going to cover quite a few right here. Uh, I think the biggest thing is results. Uh, you've tried all these things in the past that haven't worked, and now here's the next thing. And in your mind, like, oh, that's probably not going to work. Um, but what I want to do is I want to present a new concept to you. The concept is it's not lose weight to get healthy. It's get healthy to lose the weight. Shift your goal to getting healthy. Forget the weight. Because you're going to find out the weight loss is going to come with getting healthy. That concept was really, really effective. If you're focusing just on the weight, you're going to set yourself up for a lot of failure because weight loss is a byproduct of getting healthy, especially if it's healthy weight loss. All right, so what throws you off? Is it bread? Well, there's a lot of recipes for alternative breads that you can consume. So that's going to be easy. Hunger. Your hunger is going to go away when you do this because we're going to drop insulin. You're going to burn your own fat. The hunger is going to go away. It's going to take about three to seven days before it goes away. But when you adapt, no more hunger, no more cravings. That's going to really increase your ability to stick with it. Scheduling. Maybe you eat at around a certain time and your family eats around a certain time and it's not convenient, blah, blah, blah. Well, <laughs> when you do intermittent fasting, the frequency of eating is shortened and you can, you can stick that eating plan anywhere in your schedule. It doesn't have to be at a certain time. It's actually actually going to be very easy. The scheduling is going to be very simple because you're not eating six meals a day. You're eating less frequent. So it's going to be easier on your schedule. All right. Depriving yourself of certain carbs. You can have a lot of alternatives that mimic the carbohydrate for mashed potatoes, bread, cookies, uh, any of these biscuits. There are so many things that you can substitute that you will never feel deprived. I'll put a link down below. And I do, I do know what people need by, because when you tell them you can't have something, they want it more. And plus, you're going to do this on a very slow, gradual pace. So it's not a shock to your system or you're, um, you're not going to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm starving. It's not going to be the case. Let's say you're bored with eating the same thing over and over. Well, that's why there's recipe books. There's a ton of ones. We have some Kindle recipe books that give you a lot of choices. I'll put some links down below. It's expensive. Well, no, actually it's not. When you cut down the frequency of eating, oh my gosh, your, your uh, grocery bill is going to go way down. You can save four to five to six hundred dollars a month on doing this. So it's very inexpensive. And then take that a little bit of that extra and focus on the quality of your foods. Uh, you don't like salad. Well, just buy it pre-digested. No, that's impossible. Get someone to chew it for you. That's probably not going to work either. But that is one thing that you're going to have to bite the bullet. Okay. And you're going to have to figure that out. I, I think once you start doing it and maybe blend your kale with the shake, or start doing it on a smaller scale, I think you may begin to um, want it more and more because a lot of people like they, they don't like salads, but when they start consuming it, they feel so much better. They're like, huh, I can do this. So it is a small barrier to overcome, but you are going to have to consume more vegetable. Side effects, keto flu, fatigue, keto rash. Um, if you understand how to do this correctly because you've studied it and you know how to do it, you're not going to have to go through this. And that's why I recommend uh, read a book on it. Get the knowledge of it. Don't just do it, you know, halfway. Learn how to do this and prepare and do it right because you can actually um, set yourself up for a lot of good things versus a lot of bad things. I'll just give you one example. When you start going keto, you're going to dump a lot of fluid, okay? You're going to lose a lot of fluid. Water weight, probably 11 to 12 pounds of fluid. And then you're going to plateau. Well, with the fluid comes out a lot of electrolytes, potassium, sodium, but you're going to lose a lot more potassium than sodium. Okay. So then you may feel dehydrated. So you, someone told you to drink more water. 
So now you're going to drink all this water, right? Guess what that's going to do to the small amount of electrolytes? It's going to dilute them even more. So now we went from a potassium deficiency to a severe potassium deficiency. Then you get leg cramps, you get restless leg, your heart rate goes up, you can't sleep at night, uh, palpitations, all because you did not understand what's happening and how to do this correctly. So like I said, you can avoid these if you spend the time, get a book, study how to do this. All right, too restrictive. Actually, it's restricting really one thing, refined carbohydrates and sugars, but there's alternatives. So you're not going to feel like it's too restrictive. Now, there are certain diets that will use that objection and tell you, oh yeah, guess what? This is the chocolate diet or this diet. You can eat all the food you want, just in moderation, and you'll go for it. It won't work. So the, the point is that you want something that really works, then you're going to have to change something. Okay. Um, confusing. Well, again, it's only confusing because you're getting conflicting information. You're searching the web and you're going from this person over here and this person. Stick with one program, one person, and study them completely and then do their program. Try not to get too much extra information because you're never going to find something that everyone agrees 100% on because people have different viewpoints. So, again, that's what I would recommend for that. Uh, not sure it's going to work. I do understand that. You probably tried a lot of programs in the past that didn't work. And, but the bottom line is you're never going to know if it's going to work unless you try it and you have to change what you're doing. I will say from personal experience working with a lot of people, 29 years of doing this, this program that I'm presenting works amazingly well. It is hands down one of the most effective programs I've ever put out there. And I'm seeing the results. Okay, so bite the bullet, try it out, and I think you can make it easy to stick to this long term. Hey guys, I wanted to personally invite you to a new Facebook group that I just started called Dr. Berg's Keto and Intermittent Fasting Lab. Okay, so I created this so we can share our successful actions, what worked, what didn't work, your results. So I put a link down below. So go ahead and sign up and I'll see you inside.